watching. Thanks for spending part of your Taco Tuesday with us here. Uh, you, uh, you probably don't care because you're probably on vacation, but the president tonight, Joe Biden, delivered his first State of the Union, uh, Soviet Union speech. It was a tough speech. <laughs> Biden said that even though the country is divided, uh, right now we all need to come together and agree that the Sex and the City reboot wasn't anywhere near what we would hope it would be. <laughs> he probably could have just saved himself some time and tweeted that the State of the Union is malarkey AF, but the <laughs> State of our Union is as about as strong as Kim and Kanye right now. It's not. And not every lawmaker showed up to watch the speech, which is not the usual. One of those who opted out tonight was Florida Senator Marco Rubio. He skipped the State of the Union because he didn't want to take a COVID test. They required a COVID test. He said he only takes the test if he's sick, which, since you can have and spread COVID without symptoms, is an incredibly stupid thing to say. But what, in fairness, that is what Marco Rubio does. He is very on brand. <laughs> You know why he won't do it, right? You know why he won't take... Because if, he, if they swab his nose, it would probably test positive for Donald Trump's butt. And then, <laughs> so, with little Marco on the bench, there was an open booster seat at the Capitol tonight. The idea of the State of the Union is, or at least it was, uh, to bring everyone together, but it is an overtly partisan event. The Democrats clap for the Democrat president, the Republicans clap for the Republican president, and then the other ones don't clap for the others. But Joe Biden, even before his speech, did his darndest to come up with something to uplift us, all of us, no matter what color your hat is. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Putin's attack on Ukraine is a flashpoint in the war on democracy. We send our prayers, thoughts, and hope for peace. And if we can't get that, let's get real high. Things are stressful, man. So poke a little hole in that apple and start puffing like a choo-choo train. I won't judge you. Grab some flaming Hot Cheetos, a family-sized Hershey syrup, and let that spicy cheese dust and chocolate mix in your mouth like a couple of ferrets fighting in the gutter. Throw some gummy worms and a cheese danish. I like to tilt my head back and chew with my mouth open. It's sexy as all hell. I got a question for you. Should I start playing my bass again? Hold on, let me try. Yeah, that's fresh, Jack. I know you can't see me, but I'm wearing sunglasses. Yeah. Okay, hacky sack, time for bed. America, we're in this together. So spark it up, home slice. What this country needed. As the war on Ukraine intensifies and the sanctions pile up on Russia, the ruble is now worth less than one U.S. cent. Visa and MasterCard are now blocking Russian banks. Putin is he's running the Kremlin like it's Trump University or something. And it's not just <laughs> Russian oligarchs taking a hit. Yesterday, Russia was kicked out of FIFA. They won't get to play in the World Cup. And the International Hockey Federation, Russian athletes today were banned from international ice skating events. And Putin himself has been suspended as the honorary president of the International Judo Federation. He's, I didn't know he was that. And he's also stripped of his honorary black belt in Taekwondo. Apparently, invading a peaceful country is a Taekwondo. And so <laughs> they took this black belt away. And that's got to bother him because he, this is a man who takes great pride in his physical prowess. The only thing, he's not actually good at anything when it comes to physical prowess. Everybody's afraid of him, so they let him pretend he is. But for instance, this is the judo master at work. OK, it's like two old men fighting over the last bowl of soup in the Olive Garden. <laughs> this is a hockey game. In this hockey game, he miraculously scored eight goals. And um, there, there he is, you're gonna scoring uh, goal number one and goal number eight. And then uh, you can see here, he took a little victory lap and went right on his face. <laughs> and if that didn't impress you, if you weren't impressed with his physical skills, here's the, the Fats Domino of Moscow singing Blueberry Hill. Oh, 
See, that's what happens when you're not allowed to make fun of your leader. He goes unchecked. He thinks he can sing, and nobody tells him he can. Turns out the only thing he's actually good at is being a monster. And not only is the martial arts community fighting back, Hollywood is taking action. Warner Brothers has decided that the new Batman movie will not be shown in Russia. You're going to invade Ukraine? OK, you're not getting Batman. And <laughs> it's like how you punish a third grader. How good would it be if what finally brings Putin down is a bunch of Russian comic book nerds who are mad they didn't get to see Batman? Disney and Paramount have also pulled their upcoming films. And uh, in, if that doesn't work, Universal is threatening to re-release the movie Cats in Moscow. So some tough stuff going on here. But not every American is on the right side. One feisty little fella from Texas went so far as to join the Russian army. Suggest for both of What a spunky little piglet. Um, and by the way, kind of all you need to know about the Russian army is they let some random ponytail dumbass from Texas join it. <laughs> Could you imagine us doing that? Hey, guys, Dimitri's visiting from St. Petersburg. We should let him drive the tank. <laughs> Meanwhile, back here at home, one of the all-time great NFL players slash murderers weighed in with his take on Putin and Donald Trump. But I'm a little surprised that uh, he called um... Putin smart. Well, when you consider that the man makes uh, roughly $140,000 as president of Russia, and he has a beach house on the Black Sea that is reportedly worth over $1 billion, <laughs> I guess smart would be appropriate. But I do think this man is the most hated man in America. Well, he would know, I guess. <laughs> like, he's. He's just happy to pass the torch. <laughs> and speaking of the most hated men in America... FEMA has updated their nuclear explosion guidelines. The threat of nuclear explosion can add additional stress. <laughs> this is real, folks. I, for one, can tell you, I would surround myself with billions of infected COVID-19 people if it could get me out of the way of a nuclear explosion. That's just me, because I'm a rational human being and who understands math. Good one, Deej. He's, uh, is anyone gonna help him already? How many hints does he have to give us? And look at this, his, his freaking Christmas tree is still up. <laughs> it's, it's March. According to a new poll done by Harvard University, 62% of Americans believe that Russia would not have invaded Ukraine if Trump was still president, which kind of misses the point. Trump, as president, was a Russian invasion of us. <laughs> and as far as this fairy tale about him being tough on Putin, remember when our U.S. intelligence informed our president that Russia did everything they could to disrupt our election, and then when given the choice to side with Putin or our own FBI and CIA, guess who he picked? My... People came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. Yeah, why would they do something like that? It would be rude to do something like that. There's your tough guy on Russia, who, of course, wanted to have it both ways. So I have great confidence in my intelligence people. But? But, uh... I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. And what he did is an incredible offer. He offered to have the people working on the case come and work with their investigators with respect to the 12 people. I think that's an incredible offer. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. How do you say you're welcome in Russian? I don't know. Mr. <laughs> Tough Guy. What happened there is Mr. Tough Guy looked into Putin's eyes and soaked his depends. And <laughs> that was the end of that. As you know, we beam this show uh, all around the world from our base here in Hollywood. And this is, Hollywood is the... <laughs> You're the only one excited about Hollywood. 
Do you ever dress up as Spider-Man and go out to try to make money? Okay, but anyway, this is the home of the world's most famous and most canceled stars, and everybody loves to pounce now. So we went out on the street, as we've done before, and we asked passers-by to weigh in on some celebrity scandals we made up. None of these things really happened. None of the alleged perpetrators did any perpetration, but that didn't stop people from sharing very strong opinions in a new edition of Cancel Nation. We're talking a little bit about cancel culture today. What's your reaction to finding out that Denzel Washington has been cyberbullying kids with multiple burner Twitter accounts? Do you think he deserves to be canceled for that? Um, I think Denzel Washington definitely went too far uh, hiding behind the wall of anonymity uh, in a burner account to cyberbully children. I think uh, that's an extreme abuse of power. The big story, Tom Hanks was canceled for trying on underwear in The Gap and putting it back on the shelf. Do you think he deserves to be canceled for that? No, I really don't. Why not? Well, uh, we've all done it at one point or another, and he's just the one who got caught. Harrison Ford just admitted that he purposely crashes planes. Do you think that that's something that, uh... Yeah, that's very reckless, to pur purposely crash planes. Uh, you know, but that's Harrison Ford. Where are you seeing the most headlines about the plane crash revelation? Uh, I see it through Google, and I see it through Facebook updates. Uh, there's, you know, Instagram posts about it. Now they're starting memes, so, you know. Which memes did you see? I, I, I actually saw one yesterday. I said, hey, I'm here. It was actually him as Han Solo. And he was standing outside the Millennium Falcon, and it said, hey, I'm about to wreck this piece of junk. Nick Cage is promoting his breast milk smoothie cafe okay. with non-ethically sourced breast milk. And a lot of people are pretty mad at him about this. What do you think? I would be pretty mad. I actually am pretty mad about this. Um, I heard there was a football player that ended up in the hospital for drinking breast milk. We have some breast milk here. Would you want to try it? Yeah, let's do it. OK, great. <laughs> Tastes like carnation milk. Did you hear about what Danny DeVito did? No, what, what's, what's going on with Danny DeVito? I don't know. Yeah. Guys, can we stop? There's a, hold on, there's a bunch of sirens. Slowly by the uh, theater there and then continuing westbound, there's the LAPD airship overhead. Look, that's Danny DeVito right there, that's him. That's Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito just stole that truck. Danny DeVito just got caught stealing a pickup truck and he's being chased right now. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's the best season that was always sunny right now. How is he doing this? Why? Do you think he should be canceled for that? What the f It's a great question. And one more thing here today is Mardi Gras, um, which for uh, Christians is the last day to cut loose before we don't actually give up anything for Lent. And with a war going on, it's a testament to American fortitude that no matter what is happening in the world, we will always make time to get drunk and vomit in the street. And nowhere is Mardi Gras a bigger deal than New Orleans. And tonight, we brought some of the best of New Orleans to us, sitting in with the Cletones tonight on clarinet, the one and only Doreen Ketchens is here. Doreen. And Doreen will be spearheading what we hope will be a very good show. Uh, the pop singer Sierra and her quarterback husband Russell Wilson are here. We have music from Mitski, and we'll be right back with Sandra O. Oh, so stick around. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you want to see all our latest videos, click the subscribe button. And if you don't, click anyway and close your eyes when they come on.